Good evening everyone. I am Dr. Aishwarya, second year PG. Today's tutorial is on the actress tumor dynamics and classification of the glaucoma and moderator for the today's session is Dr. Priyansha Bullet. Now we are going to discuss the topic in these headings. Uh, introduction, actress tumor dynamics, it includes the actress formation of actual drainage. Any abnormality in intraocular pressure are a result of the altered actress tumor dynamics, predominantly a deranged outflow. The importance of understanding actress flow lies in both understanding of the pathogenesis of the glaucoma and more importantly developing methods for the lowering the intraocular pressure. Now let's discuss about embryology. Anterior chamber cavity it is formed as a slit in mesenchyma between the surface ectoderm and developing iris. And the posterior chamber cavity it is formed as a slit in mesenchyma posterior to the developing iris and anterior to the developing lens. The trabecular meshwork development occurs by the growth and differentiation of uh, the cells from the mass of the mesenchymal cells which are derived from the neural crest cell. Uh, ciliary muscles, stroma of the ciliary body, ciliary vessels which are derived from the neural crest mesenchyma whereas the epithelial layers of the ciliary body are derived from the neuroectoderm. At the same time, the angle is occupied by the mesenchymal cells from which the trabecular meshwork develops. At third month, angle basis deepens and it forms the uh, corneal angle and the shame scanner develops from the mesodermal mesenchyma. At fifth month, the closed anterior chamber cavity it is formed, it is continuously lined by the endothelial cell layer and at this, this uh, stage there is the anterior uh, surface of the iris gets inserted in front of for the primordial trabecular meshwork. In, uh, in third trimester, the endothelial cell layer starts disappearing from the pupillary membrane and the iris and it forms the cavities over the anterior chamber angle. Uh, in this stage, uh, the peripheral uveal tissue begins to the slide posteriorly and the development of the trabecular, uh, lamellar and intratrabecular spaces occurs from the innermost uh, part of the primordial trabecular uh, meshwork towards the uh, uh, shen skin and normal anterior chamber angle is not fully developed until one year of age. Any deviation from the normal uh, development of the angle results in the childhood glaucoma. Uh, as you all know, aqueous humor is secreted into the posterior chamber by the ciliary process part of the ciliary body. From the uh, posterior chamber, aqueous enters to the pupil into the anterior chamber and it is drained out through the conventional and uh, unconventional pathway. Uh, now let's discuss in detail about the anatomy of the ciliary body and uh, the aqueous humor formation. Uh, ciliary body, it is a forward continuation of the choroid at the area and it is anteriorly attached to the sclerous spur. It is uh, triangular in a cross section. Anterior part, it has a finger like uh, projections uh, called ciliary processes. It is called as the pars plicata. It is about 2 to 2.5 mm wide and uh, the posterior has a smooth part. It is called as the pars plana. It is about 5 mm wide temporally and it is uh, 3 mm wide nasally. Uh, now let's discuss about the microscopic structure of the ciliary body. Ciliary body has the five layers from the outer to the inner. Uh, outermost layer is the supraciliary lamina. It is the condensed the outer part of the stroma of the ciliary body. It contains the collagen fibers. The supracolloidal lamina of uh, the choroid it is uh, anteriorly continued as the supraciliary lamina at the ora serrata. Uh, the supraciliary lamina uh, it is anteriorly continued as the anterior. Uh, anti limiting layer of the iris. Uh, inner to the supraciliary lamina is uh, as the stroma of the ciliary body which we will discuss in detail uh, in the later and uh, the stroma is lined by the two layers of epithelial. Uh, outermost is the pigment epithelial layer. Uh, the retinal pigment epithelial layer it is anteriorly uh, continued as the pigment epithelial layer of the ciliary body like the ora serrata. And the pigment epithelial layer of the ciliary body, it is anteriorly continued as the anterior epithelial layer of the iris. Uh, inner to the pigment epithelial layer of the ciliary body, it is the non uh, pigment epithelial layer. The sensory retina, at the ora serrata, it anteriorly continued as the non pigment epithelial layer. And this non pigment epithelial layer, it is uh, anteriorly continued as the posterior pigment epithelial layer. Uh, the non pigment epithelial layer. Uh, base membrane is called as the interlimiting membrane. 
uh, it is the anterior continuation of the internal limiting membrane of the retina. Uh, the stroma of the ciliary body, uh, it contains connective tissue consisting of the collagen fibroblast and uh, vessels, nerves and ciliary muscle. Uh, there are three types of ciliary muscle in the ciliary body, longitudinal, circular and radial. Longitudinal or the neurovenal fibers. Uh, yeah, yeah, continue, continue. They are anteriorly, uh, it is anteriorly attached to the spheral spur and the adjacent tubular network and posteriorly it is uh, uh, inserted into the supraparietal lamina way behind the equator and the circular uh, fibers these are circular, uh, circular muscles these are present uh, in the uh, anterior and innermost portion of the ciliary body uh, these are present parallel to the limbus and the radial uh, muscle fibers they connect to the longitudinal and the, the circular muscle fibers so yeah. can anyone uh, describe the functions of these muscles the longitudinal longitudinal Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Continue. The longitudinal muscles uh, open up the scleral spur and uh, When will it open up the scleral spur? Uh, like, contraction. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what supplies the muscle? It's written there. Parasympathetic fibers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the circular muscles uh, contract and uh, they cause uh, the zonules to relax. So what will happen? So there will be an uh, increase uh, in the curvature of the lens and this will help in accommodation. Yeah, good. Uh, then uh, the radial muscles are just uh, like a connection between them. Okay, continue Ash. Yes, contraction of the longitudinal muscle fibers. Uh, the sclerous spur and the trabecular network which leads to increase in the trabecular outflow and the contraction of this uh, uh, ciliary muscle helps in accommodation. These uh, muscles are uh, supplied by the parasympathetic fibers from the ciliary ganglion via the short ciliary nerves. The functional unit responsible for the active tumor uh, secretion is the ciliary process. These are the finger-like projections from the parts like of the ciliary body. They are 70 to 80 in number. This is the main site of the active tumor production. Uh, each ciliary processes have the central capillaries. Uh, these capillaries are the have the thin endothelium with penetration, which are lined by the basement membrane. And the stroma is uh, very thin, which separates the capillary uh, network from the epithelial layers. Uh, there are two layers of the epithelium surrounding the stroma, with the uh, apical surface of the two layers uh, in opposition to the each other. The the epithelial layer which is uh, present towards the stroma is the uh, outer pigmented epithelial layer and uh, the uh, epithelial layer which is present towards the posterior chamber uh, towards the aqueous is the inner non-pigmented epithelial layer. Outer pigmented epithelial layer has the melanin granules in cytoplasm and it is lined by the epithelial basement membrane or stromal side and uh, the inner non-pigmented epithelial layer it contains uh, the mitochondria and it has the uh, zona occludens or the tight junctions and lateral and surface uh, intervegetations. There are various uh, intercellular connections which connects the adjacent cells within each epithelial layer as well as the apical surface of the two layers. Those are called as the gap junctions and these tight junctions are present between uh, the epithelial uh, cells in the non-pigmented epithelial layer which forms the blood aqueous barrier and uh, it uh, effectively barriers uh, the transport of the intermediate and low molecular weight substances such as protein. Now let's discuss about the blood supply of the ciliary body. Blood supply of the ciliary body is mainly by the anterior ciliary artery and the long posterior ciliary artery which forms uh, uh, intramuscular circle and the major arterial circle. Intramuscular circle it is formed in the ciliary muscle. It is formed by the branches of the anterior ciliary arteries anastomosing with each other and also with the Anastomosing with the branches from the long posterior ciliary artery and uh, the major arterial circle it lies near the iris root. It is formed mainly from the paralumbar branches of the long posterior ciliary artery, which anastomoses with the branches of the anterior ciliary artery. It is the immediate vascular supply of the iris and the ciliary process. Okay, just a minute. So uh, the major arterial circle uh, uh, supplies the ciliary processes, which is the uh, uh, site of aqueous tumor production. So, uh, these arteries are a branch of which artery? Yeah, uh, 
these are uh, branches of the anterior ciliary artery only which come from the muscular artery no like uh, okay anyone else of oh, thalamic artery yeah which is a branch of internal carotid yeah yeah carry on actually yeah. now supply to the ciliary bodies by the long and short post ciliary nerves and the parasympathetic innervation is uh, seen by the short ciliary nerves which innervate the ciliary muscles as discussed before and the sympathetic fibers the synapse in the superior cervical ganglion and the postsynaptic fibers are distributed to the ciliary blood vessels uh, the no uh, sympathetic fibers are not in the in the innervation to the ciliary epithelium has been identified anatomically but it is thought that the catecholamine neurotransmitters which is released from the A sympathetic nerve ending, uh, nerve endings, diffuses to the adrenergic receptors on the ciliary epithelium, and the sensory supply is from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Ah, uh, so uh, what receptors are found on the ciliary body vessels, and what receptors are found on the epithelium? Ma'am, the receptors are alpha two and uh, epithelium as beta receptors. Okay. Now let's discuss about the blood aspect. This. Uh, figure a it shows the separation of the longitudinal and the circular muscle fibers this called as angle decision on gonioscopy we can see the widening of the ciliary body band uh, in figure b we see the separation of the longitudinal fibers from the sclerous spur as a result of which there is direct communication of the aqueous from the anterior chamber into the supracoroidal space uh, which uh, results in increased urethral outflow On gonioscopy, it appears as an abnormal region, uh, abnormal whitish region posterior to the ciliary spur, displacing the iris root and ciliary body posteriorly. This uh, uh, figure C it shows the separation of the iris from its attachment to the ciliary body. It is called as iridodiasis. In this, we can see that there is a damage to the abdominal meshwork. Now let's discuss about the formation of the aqueous tumor. Aqueous tumor it is primarily derived from the plasma uh, within within the capillary network of the ciliary processes. Various constituents of the aqueous tumor have to transverse the uh, capillary wall, stroma, and the two layers of the epithelium to enter into the posterior chamber. There are uh, three steps in the formation of the aqueous tumor. First is the formation of the stromal pool. Later there will be the actual uh, transport of the stromal piglet and the passive transport across the wall. pigmented ciliary epithelium okay just tell uh, what uh, agm will uh, act here like on this step formation of stromal pool what agm will act here beta blockers no stromal pool is formed by the vessels right alpha agonists carbonic anhydrase inhibitors no who said alpha agonists yeah so alpha agonist will uh, act on this uh, step so the stromal pool uh, less of uh, filtration will occur and stromal uh, pool will not be formed uh, that much also uh, what will happen in ocular ischemic syndrome since there is no uh, blood flow then the action won't be occurring no ciliary body perfusion will decrease so again uh, aqueous humor uh, production will decrease because this step will be affected okay continue yeah yeah continue Now let's discuss in detail in each step. The formation of the stromal pool is the first step in aqueous tumor production. It uh, occurs by the ultrafiltration. By uh, ultrafiltration, most substances pass easily from the capillary of the ciliary processes as they are uh, they are penetrations. Mm, uh, these uh, uh, filtrate they pass across the stroma and between the pigmented epithelial layer of the ciliary body. Uh, till the uh, to accumulate behind the tight junctions of the non-pigmented epithelial layer, the formation of the aqueous tumor occurs by three mechanisms: diffusion, ultrafiltration, and active secretion. Active secretion is a major uh, factor in aqueous tumor production, which accounts for seventy percent. Diffusion accounts for ten percent, and ultrafiltration accounts for twenty percent. Uh, diffusion it is the movement of the substances across the membrane along the concentration gradient. Liquid soluble substances through the liquid portion of the membrane are transported by the diffusion. Ultrafiltration. It is a process by which fluid and its uh, solutes across the semi-permeable uh, membrane under the pressure gradient. Uh, in aqueous tumor production, water and water soluble substances limited by the size and charge 
close to theoretical microphores in the pores of the cell membrane in response to the osmotic gradient of the hydrostatic pressure. Active secretion, it is an energy dependent process uh, selecti uh, selectively during the transportation of the substances against its electrochemical gradient across the cell membrane. Water soluble substances of larger size or the greater charge are transported by the active secretion. Uh, the active secretion is seen across the pigmented and non pigmented epithelial layer of the ciliary body. Okay, just wait. Uh, can anyone explain the active secretion? Jazz is there? Ma'am, active secretion will be against the electrochemical gradient and there are various uh, ion transporters for that purpose. So, the sodium potassium ATPase transporter is present which will transport 2 potassium in and 3 potassium outside across the non-pigmented epithelial cell layer. And uh, the anion transporter for chloride ion will uh, help to transport chloride ion uh, outside. Okay, what happens in active secretion is that sodium chloride is transported from the uh, pigmented epithelium then from pigmented to non-pigmented and then from non-pigmented to the aqueous in the posterior chamber so from the stroma uh, through the antipodes uh, present there sodium and hydrogen and uh, chloride bicarbonate antipodes the uh, sodium chloride will enter the pigment epi uh, epithelium cell then through the gap junctions from the pigment to the non-pigmented epithelium then from uh, these uh, uh, sodium potassium ATPase and all they will uh, be transferred sodium will be transferred to the aqueous room of the posterior chamber and then chloride will follow and then water will follow okay okay carry on as uh, discussed sodium is uh, transported actively uh, about 70 percent by the sodium potassium ATPase which is present on the pigmented and non-pigmented epithelium the sodium potassium ATPase uh, each uh, pump is uh, not related to the concentration of the sodium which is present in the plasma and uh, the uh, carbonic hydrates, it regulates the pH of the cytoplasm for the pro uh, optimum functioning of the sodium potassium ATPase. Uh, the sodium is actively transported to the posterior chamber by the other transporters like sodium potassium uh, two chloride simple, sodium potassium and antipot also. The 30% of the sodium uh, enters the posterior chamber by the diffusion and the ultrafiltration. Uh, chloride is the major anion which is uh, uh, actively transported into the posterior chamber. Active transport of the chloride depends upon the sodium and the pH level. Chloride is also gets uh, transported to the posterior chamber by the diffusion and the potassium is transported to the posterior chamber by the active secretion and the diffusion. And the aspartic acid is actively secreted into the posterior chamber by the sodium dependent uh, vitamin C transporter and the amino acids are also uh, transported actively into the posterior chamber. Bicarbonate formation is uh, occurred by the carbonic anhydrase which is present in the cytoplasm of uh, the ciliary body epithelium. Uh, this uh, carbonic anhydrase it is the, the uh, type C or the uh, type uh, 2 isoform. Uh, the carbonic hydrates mediates the transport of the bicarbonate across the ciliary epithelium to the rapid interconvention of the bicarbonate and the carbon dioxide. Uh, next, uh, we will discuss about the passive transport. Uh, the active transport of the previously discussed substances across the non-pigment epithelium uh, results in the uh, osmotic and electrical gradient in order to maintain the balance of the osmotic and electric forces water chloride and the other small protein move into the posterior chamber by the ultrafiltration and uh, diffusion sodium is the major cationic uh, which is responsible for the movement of the water into the posterior chamber now let's discuss about the factors affecting the aqueous humor production uh, there is diagonal variation in the aqueous humor production uh, maximum pressure is seen in the morning hours and minimum intraocular pressure is seen late at night or early in the morning in the majority of the subjects. Uh, it is due to the aqueous flow is higher in morning than in the afternoon and the rate of aqueous formation during sleep is approximately one half the rate upon first awakening. Um, it is due to reduction in the flow is the reason of the decreased stimulation of the ciliary epithelium by the circulating catecholamines. Age, reduction in the aqueous formation uh, occurs with age, particularly after 60 years of age, with, uh, 60 years of age there is a decrease in the aqueous tumor production. It is occurred due to the changes in the ultrastructure of the aging ciliary epithelial cells. 
vasopressin at physiological level at physiological level it supports the active transport of the sodium ion across the ciliary epithelium which results in the aqueous tumor uh, formation but at the levels of vasopressin depends upon the total body hydration when there is increase in total body hydration there will be decrease in the plasma osmolarity as a result uh, there is more water influx across the ciliary epithelium but at the same time due to the decrease in the plasma osmolarity there will be decrease in the vasopressin which uh, decreases the active secretion of the sodium across the epithelium uh, adrenal cycles activity is uh, noted in the ciliary epithelium ciliary body epithelium the activation of the uh, adrenal cyclase leads to the uh, cyclic amp formation which activates the specific protein kinase the specific protein kinase results in the specific protein phosphorylation which increases the aqueous secretion this uh, specific protein kinase also change uh, change the permeability of the non pigment ciliary epithelium this uh, Catecholamine receptors are present on the uh, ciliary epithelium. Uh, beta receptors, when they are stimulated, increases the adrenal cyclase activity as a result of which aqueous secretion increases. When the alpha 2 receptors are uh, stimulated, it uh, decreases the adrenal cyclase activity as a result of which we, there is decrease in the aqueous uh, secretion. Now, let us discuss uh, the pharmacological agents which uh, decreases the aqueous secretion. Uh, the antiglucan medication which decreases the aqueous secretion are the beta blockers, alpha agonists and carbon carbohydrates inhibitors. Beta blockers which are present on non pigmented ciliary epithelium, these are the beta 2 receptors and uh, the examples of beta blockers are timolol, levoglenol, cartilol, betaxolol and the alpha agonists. These are present on ciliary vessels and the ciliary uh, epithelium, non pigmented epithelial layer. It has uh, alpha 2 receptors and the examples are the brinolin and acraclindy and the carbonic and uh, hydrates. It is uh, present in the ciliary epithelium. Inhibition of this uh, carbonic hydrates results in the decrease in the aqueous secretion and the examples are the astrozolomide, benzolomide, and dorsolomide. General anesthetic agents like the halopine, sevoflurane, barbiturates, they Artificial reduction of intraocular pressure is seen, uh, which masks the pathological pressure elevation. So, uh, during the examination under general anesthesia, uh, IOP measurement should be done before uh, inducing the GA with these agents. Uh, uh, just a minute. So, when should be the IOP checked uh, after uh, giving general anesthesia during EUA? Soon after induction. Yeah, soon after uh, induction. Uh, now, let's discuss about functions of the aqueous tumor. It brings the oxygen and nutrients to the cells of the limbs and the cornea. It removes the products of metabolism and toxic substances. It provides optically clear medium for vision and it inflates the globe and provides the mechanism for maintaining the intraocular pressure, thereby maintaining the structural integrity of the ocular structure. And it has high ascorbic levels which protect against the ultraviolet induced uh, oxidative products and it uh, facilitates the cellular and humoral responses of eye to inflammation and infection. Uh, is your uh, chemical properties of aqueous rate of aqueous uh, production is 2.3 microliters per minute and volume is 0.31 ml in anterior chamber it is 0.25 ml in posterior chamber it is 0.06 ml refractive index is 1.336 uh, density it is uh, slightly greater than the water and pH is slightly acidic in anterior chamber uh, around 7.2 and it is slightly hyperosmotic to the plasma by 3 to 5 milli osmos per liter uh, Biochemical composition 99.9% it is water and uh, the proteins uh, compared to the plasma uh, proteins in the aqueous is 0.02% and in plasma it is about 7% in aqueous 5 to uh, 16 milligrams per 100 ml uh, proteins are present whereas in uh, plasma uh, 6 to 7 milligrams of uh, the proteins per 100 ml it is uh, seen albumin uh, is uh, in higher concentration than the globulins and the Albumin to globulin ratio is same as in plasma. The concentration of the ascorbate, pyruvate, lactate is much higher than the plasma, and the glucose is 75% of the plasma concentration. The electrolytes, chloride concentration in anterior chamber is more than plasma, and the plasma concentration is more than the posterior chamber. Bicarbonates, in the bicarbonates, uh, 
posterior chamber uh, there is more concentration than the anterior chamber as uh, in the posterior chamber the bicarbonates gets decompensated by the uh, hydrogen ions which were released uh, from the uh, metabolism of the cornea and uh, lens uh, the uh, level of the bicarbonate in the anterior chamber it is more than the plasma level and the level of the sodium it is uh, equal to the plasma tissue plasmation and its proactivator is present in the aqueous blood aqueous uh, barrier uh, just a minute so what forms the blood aqueous barrier the tight junctions in the non pigment epithelium yeah that is a part of blood aqueous barrier there is one more thing on the endothelial layer of the blood vessels of the iris and yeah. the uh, yeah and the tight junctions uh-huh. okay carry on so as discussed the tight junction between the non pigment epithelium of the ciliary body and the endothelial cells of uh, the capillaries of the iris forms a blood aqueous barrier which is responsible for maintaining difference in the chemical composition between the plasma and the aqueous tumor many endogenous and exogenous tumor they uh, create uh, they break the blood aqueous barrier which results in the increase uh, permeability of the epithelium and vascular endothelial cells as a result there will be an increase in the protein concentration in the aqueous tumor So, what is the clinical application here? Clinical application of the blood aqueous barrier? Any inflammation or trauma uh, break, causing breakdown of this barrier can cause uh, various inflammatory cells to come in the AC. But uh, okay, when we give a hyperosmotic agent like mannitol, what happens? It doesn't cross his blood aqueous barrier. So, what will happen? Increase in the osmotic gradient. Now, the mannitol uh, mostly draws uh, draws water from the vitreous and makes the chamber deep. Ah, oh, chamber deep, but it will draw the fluid, so the IOP will decrease. Okay, I think you are talking about malignant glaucoma. Yeah, yeah. In that, uh, yeah, it can happen. Oh, these zona occludens are the five junctions between non-pigment uh, epithelium of the ciliary body, forms the uh, part of the blood aqueous barrier. Uh, many factors. which leads to the breakdown of the blood aqueous barrier this are trauma and mechanical injury to the iris or lens by the confusion of paracentesis and the, the chemical irritants like nitrogen mustard formaldehyde acid or alkali and the neuronal activity due to the stimulation of trigeminal nerve also gives the breakdown in the blood aqueous barrier and endogenous mediators like histamine bradykinin prostaglandin serotonin and acetylcholine also causes the breakdown of the blood aqueous barrier in intraocular inflammations infections in serious conditions like uh, exposure to radiation uh, infrared radiation laser energy alpha marine cell stimulating hormone and parasympathetic mimetic agents also causes the break in the blood aqueous barrier let's discuss about the aqueous current this tumor is uh, secreted from the ciliary processes into the posterior chamber from the posterior chamber it enters to the pupil into the the anterior chamber against the slight physiological resistance in the anterior chamber there is the, the convection currents due to the uh, temperature gradient between the anterior part of the anterior chamber and the posterior part of the anterior chamber the anterior part of the anterior chamber is the cooler due to the evaporation of the tears from the corneal surface and due to the vascularity and the posterior part uh, is warmer due to the iris vessels so due to the effect of this uh, temperature gradient there is convection current uh, the aqueous uh, in the posterior part of the anterior chamber it moves upwards along the warmer iris and in the anterior part it moves downwards along the cooler cornea so what is the applied aspect here kps are deposited in the lower part of the cornea yeah and what else tn pigments the pig uh, trabecular meshwork pigments when we see on uh, Okay. They are more inferiorly. Inferior, yeah. What else? So on post op day one, if your IOP is high. Presence of visco, if there is no aqueous current. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. Now, the aqueous when the posterior chamber enters the anterior chamber, from anterior chamber it enters the angle. Now we will discuss in brief the um, anatomy of the angle. On gonios copy from uh, posterior to the anterior, the structures seen are the posterior ciliary body band, uh, ciliary spur. pigmented trabecular meshwork non pigmented trabecular meshwork and phallus line at the inverse there is an indentation on the inner surface which is called as the sphenal circle 
and the, the posterior it has the po a sharp posterior margin it is this it is called serial uh, spur uh, and this sloping anterior wall that extends to the peripheral columna a seal like structure in the tubular meshwork mm -hmm. which bridges the serial sulcus converting it into a tube called a shrimp's canal uh, the ciliary body it is attached to the serial spur and the iris inserts into the anterior side of the uh, ciliary body and uh, the part of the ciliary body which is present between the serial spur and the iris insertion it is called as ciliary body band and uh, the ciliary body band width depends upon the level of the iris insertion and it is wider in minor it appears grey to dark brown in color or gonioscopy aqueous uh, is drained via two pathways trabecular uh, it is also called as the conventional pathway and the use here is or the unconventional outflow. Uh, the trabecular uh, pathway is uh, consumed uh, about 75 to 90% and the use here pathway is consumed about 10 to 25%. Now let us uh, uh, discuss about uh, the uh, structure of the trabecular meshwork. The trabecular meshwork has the three parts, uvial part, the corneosphere and the dexatomicular part. And um, the uvial part is the innermost part. It is attached to the iris root ciliary body uh, to this uh, schwartz line. It is uh, two to three layers thick. The uveal trabecular bands are arranged in such a way that it creates some regular openings of uh, 25 to uh, 75 microns. And uh, the corneosphere part is uh, the uh, larger and the middle portion of the trabecular mesh which connects the uveal and uh, jexacanular part. It uh, extends from the spheral spot to the lateral wall of the spheral sulcus and it uh, has an electrical opening of uh, 5 to uh, 50 microns. Uh, the outermost part is the dexacanacular part. It uh, provides the normal resistance uh, to the aqueous outflow. It has uh, it is 2 to 5 layers the connective tissue, layer which is lined by the endothelial layer on the either side, and thickness is uh, 2 to 20 microns. It uh, connects the corneosphereal uh, meshwork with the uh, Schlem's canal. Uh, as uh, uh, from the inner to, uh, to the outer, the openings in the trabecular meshwork, uh, the size of opening in the trabecular meshwork gradually decreases. Uh, from the trabecular meshwork, the aqueous enters the uh, Schlem's canal, which is lined by the endothelium uh, circumferentially. And this endothelium uh, on the inner side, it has irregular, it is irregular spindle shape and it contains uh, the chain fractals, whereas on the outer uh, side, uh, it has a smooth and the flat endothelial cells. The outer wall of uh, the Schlem's canal contains numerous openings for the collector channel. Uh, from the Schlem's canal, through the collector uh, channels or the intraskeletal aqueous vessels, they enter the episcleral vein. These are uh, 25 to 35 number, there are no valves, they are wide at the origin and uh, it uh, tapers towards uh, the anastomosis with the venous channel. Uh, these collector channels can be divided into direct and indirect system. Direct it is formed by the eight large vessels which run short in the intrasterial course and they terminate directly into the episterial vein. Uh, whereas indirect system it forms a numerous uh, uh, fine collector channels which drain into the three interconnecting uh, venous plexuses. Those are the deep intrasteral plexuses, mid intrasteral plexuses, episcleral venous plexuses before eventually draining into the episcleral vein. From the episcleral vein, uh, it uh, drains into the anterior ciliary vein and the ophthalmic vein which finally drains into the cavernous channels. There are various mechanisms for the flow of aqueous transport across the inner wall of the shell skin of the deficitary vein. It is by the patch filter mechanism or the and aqueous, uh, aqueous outflow active form mechanism uh, of various uh, theory proposed for the patch filter mechanism. Vacuolation theory or the force and joint uh, vacuum system theory is uh, widely accepted. Uh, according to this theory, there are uh, endothelial cells lining the shell skin has uh, vesicles and large uh, vacuums. It is suggested that the vacuoles open and close intermittently to transport the aqueous from the dexacanular tissue to the Schlem's canal. In this we can uh, see the uh, non-vacuolated stage. In this, uh, the stage of early enfolding of the basal surface of the endothelial cells and the, the stage of the macrovascular formation and uh, the stage of the vacuolar uh, transcellular channel formation and uh, Finally, there is the stage of occlusion of the basal infolding. This is the passive filter mechanism by which aqueous enters uh, the trans canal from the 
Dexapilla tubular mesure. Recently, it has been uh, reported that the PS output system acts as a biomechanical firm. Uh, the tubular meshwork it moves uh, outward and recoils backward in response to the ocular pulse, blinking, and eye movements. And it was reported that the aqueous wall mechanism is uh, at the level of the inner wall of the shin scanner, which allows the only unidirectional passage of the aqueous from the juxtapenar space to the shin scanner. During the diastole, there will be less blood flow to the choroidal vasculature. As a result, there is slightly decrease in the intraocular pressure. Uh, as a result, the tubular meshwork is retracted inward which creates a negative pressure in the shen scanner and opening of this aqueous flows and the aqueous flows into the shen scanner. Uh, whereas uh, during in uh, systole, there is a choroidal vascular expansion which results in the transient rise in intraocular pressure. This uh, creates an aqueous, aqueous pulse field which uh, uh, distends the trabecular meshwork pushing outward against the shen scanner uh, which uh, leads to the closing of the aqueous valves as a result of which aqueous uh, flows from aqueous uh, from the uh, shen scanner is pushed to the character channel to the, uh, and into the exterior vein. Uh, Uveoscleral outflow, uh, it is also called as the unconventional pathway. In uh, this aqueous passes uh, across the ciliary body and it enters uh, the supracoroidal uh, space and it is drained by the venous circulation in the ciliary body, choroid and sclera. Now let's discuss about uh, the the medications which increases the aqueous outflow uh, can be increased by increasing the regular uh, outflow pathway or the increase in the uveous spiral outflow pathway. Uh, the drugs which are increasing the regular outflow pathway are the uh, mitotics uh, like pilocarpine and the virokinase inhibitors and the drugs which increase the uveous spiral pathway are the prostate and the nodes and uh, brimodine. Uh, what is the mode of action of rho kinase inhibitors? Rho kinase inhibitors, it uh, alters the extra matrix of the trabecular mesh and also causes uh, dilatation of the spiral vein. Yeah, it acts on the uh, cytoskeleton, so morpho there are morphological changes on the of the trabecular mesh work. So, it increases the trabecular outflow. And how does PG analog will act? How will it act? The modeling of the extra matrix. Yeah, so it will act through induction of uh, matrix metalloproteinase in the ciliary body, which will cause breakdown of the extracellular matrix and reducing the resistance to the outflow of the fluid aqueous humor. Okay. This is an overview. Uh, ciliary aqueous, which is produced from the ciliary process, uh, enters the posterior chamber. From the posterior chamber, through the people enters the anterior chamber. From the anterior chamber, it is yeah, we have already discussed this. Just skip this. Uh, various. Uh, mechanisms by which there is a uh, development of the resistance to the uh, outflow pathway. There is increase in the resistance to the trabecular uh, uh, measured outflow pathway. It is seen when, uh, due to the morphological changes which occurs due to the age and in chronic open and glaucoma. If increase in age, the spiral spur becomes more prominent and uh, the uveal, uveal part of the trabecular measure becomes more compact and uh, the, the trabecular there is progressive thickening of uh, the trabecular bands and also the decrease in the number of uh, gain cells and gain vacuums and the cell count in the patient scanner decrease in the trabecular outflow and uh, with increase in age there is also more increase in the extracellular matrix of uh, the trabecular mesure. Uh, the alteration in the extracellular matrix of the trabecular mesure also leads to the increase in the extracellular to trabecular mesure outflow and uh, glucocorticoids by various mechanisms they increases the resistance to the trabecular measure outflow pathway. Uh, they glucocorticoids they inhibit the synthesis of the endogenous prostaglandins and it has direct effect on the extracellular matrix metabolism of the trabecular cells. It also alters the cytoskeletal organization of the cultured trabecular measure cells uh, and by cellular and cytoskeletal mechanisms also there is development of resistance to the trabecular measure outflow. Resistance to the uveoscleral outflow it increases with age and mitotics and it decreases in cyclophilogic prostaglandins and it uh, decreases in the cyclodials. Uh, elevated epithelial venous pressure, it is... Uh, so, uh, uh, what is the normal epithelial venous pressure? Anybody? Just... Okay, what uh, clinical sign we might see on gonio with raised epithelial venous pressure? Blood and schlem scanner. Okay. Yeah, carry on. Uh, various conditions. 
ఇన్విచ్లాస్టి there will be the modification of the trabecular meshwork uh, which results in the increase in the outflow of the aqueous tumor in uh, uh, trabeculectomy uh, and uh, the glaucoma drainage implant surgery uh, where they are bypassing uh, outflow resistance by shunting the aqueous tumor uh, through and around the trabecular meshwork now let's discuss about the classification of the glaucoma glaucoma is uh, broadly classified into the aneuploser glaucoma open angle and uh, the developmental anomalies of the anterior chamber and the aneuploser glaucoma is further classified into primary aneuploser glaucoma secondary aneuploser glaucoma and the primary aneuploser glaucoma based on natural history it is further classified into primary aneuploser suspect primary aneuploser primary aneuploser glaucoma and based on anterior segment mechanism of closure further classified into iris pupil obstruction plateau iris syndrome lens pupil glaucoma block and the open angle glaucoma is further classified into primary open angle and secondary open angle primary open angle is further classified into primary open angle glaucoma and the normal tension glaucoma secondary angle closure glaucoma occurs by the anterior pillow mechanism or the posterior cushion mechanism the anterior pillow mechanism is seen in universal glaucoma in the corneal endothelial syndrome or uh, posterior polyformis dystrophy fibrous in growth with thin down growth and the posterior cushion mechanism it is seen in ciliary glaucoma cysts of eyes and ciliary body intraocular tumors and ophthalmos uh, supraparietal hemorrhage during ophthalmic procedures more neurotic hypnopexy uh, ciliary choroidal effusion and the second the cause of the secondary open angle glaucoma are the pigmented glaucoma so the exploration glaucoma steroid induced glaucoma lens induced glaucoma of uh, echo light glaucoma uh, lens induced glaucoma further classified into echo light glaucoma lens particle glaucoma echo nephropathy and uh, the glaucoma after cataract surgery glaucoma after vitrectomy trauma intraocular hemorrhage retinal detachment uveitis uh, amyloidosis intraocular tumors like malignant myeloma metastatic lesions and pinea lymphoma and uh, the increased tracheal venous pressure uh, just a minute uh, can pseudo exfoliation glaucoma cause cause angle closure and how if it does uh, in case of zonular weakness and uh, anterior lens subluxation kind of thing ah uh, okay and the developmental anomalies of anterior angle uh, if there is a high insertion of the anterior uvea the development of the congenital glaucoma and juvenile glaucoma incomplete development of the trabecular meshwork or the shenskin is seen in axenfield trigger syndrome peters anomaly and endocorneal adhesions are also seen in axenfield trigger syndrome in anomaly uh, cgrm classification of uh, the childhood glaucoma uh, in childhood according to the childhood glaucoma is classified into primary childhood glaucoma and secondary childhood glaucoma primary childhood glaucoma is further classified into primary congenital glaucoma and juvenile open angle glaucoma primary congenital glaucoma if it uh, is uh, detected from 0 to 1 month of age it is called as neonatal or newborn uh, 1 to 20, uh, 24 months or 2 years it is called as infantile uh, glaucoma if it is more than 24 months it is called late onset uh, glaucoma late onset childhood glaucoma the secondary childhood glaucoma it is the first classified uh, based on the association with non acquired ocular anomalies uh, and association with non acquired systemic disease of syndrome on the the acquired condition and the glaucoma uh, following the cataract surgery secondary childhood glaucoma um, associated with non acquired ocular anomalies are the axenfeld trigger anomaly peters anomaly congenital ectopia uvea persistent fetal vasculature and that the secondary childhood glaucoma associated with non acquired systemic disease or syndrome are the chromosomal disorders such as the trisomy 21 down syndrome connective tissue disorders like marfan's metabolic uh, syndrome like uh, homocysteinuria mucopolysaccharidosis and in neurofibromatosis Stru- Struve-Weber syndrome and congenital glaucoma so the secondary childhood glaucoma associated with acquired condition like the uh, uveitis trauma steroid induced tumors which are benign or malignant ocular orbital and retinopathy of immaturity and secondary uh, childhood glaucoma following the cataract surgery congenital idiopathic cataract uh, 
congenital cataract, which is associated with ocular anomalies or systemic disease or cracoid cataract with no previous glaucoma. Uh, there is anatomical classification of uh, the developmental glaucoma by the Hoskins Schaffer uh, Peter Newton, which is uh, classified into three classes isolated trabecular dystenesis, irregular trabecular dystenesis, and coronary trabecular dystenesis. In uh, isolated uh, trabecular dystenesis, uh, it will be flat, uh, all the classes based on flat iris insertion, concave iris insertion. In uh, irregular trabecular dystenesis, for the class based on anterior stromal defect, anomalous iris vessels, and uh, structural anomalies. Coronary trabecular dystenesis, uh, it is present uh, peripherally. It is called as axonal anomaly, which is mid periphery, seen in uh, radius anomaly, central, it is seen in uh, fetus anomaly. Products Anderson uh, Parish criteria. It is uh, mm, just a minute. So, this is uh, based on the uh, visual fields, the staging system of the uh, basically the staging of glaucoma on, ba on based on the visual field. So, we should know okay. that so that we can decide our target IOP and our follow up for the patient. And uh, this is also asked in the DNB uh, exam. Okay. Visual fields, it is uh, classified into three types uh, three early defect, moderate defect, and severe defect. In uh, early defect, mean deviation, it is not worse than uh, uh, minus six, and uh, less than 25% of the points are depressed below the 5% level, and uh, less than 10 points are depressed below the 1% level on the part time deviation plot. And all points in the central 5 degree must have the sensitivity of at least uh, 15. Uh, and the moderate defect, it is uh, the mean deviation uh, between minus uh, 6 to minus 12, and less than 50% of the points are depressed below the 5% level, and less than 25 points are depressed below the 1% level on the pattern deviation plot. And no points in the central 5 degree can have a sensitivity of 0 decibels, only one hemi field may have point with a sensitivity of less than 15 decibels within the 5 degree of fixation and in C, uh, it is classified as a, a severe defect if it has any of the following. If the main deviation is more than minus 12 decibels and more than 50% of the points depressed below the 5% level or more than 25% of the points are depressed below the 1% level on the pattern deviation plot and at least one point in the central uh, uh, 5 degree has a sensitivity of uh, 0 decibels and uh, the points within the central 5 degree with the sensitivity of less than 50 decibels in both hemispheres. Okay, so no need to uh, read this. This is the MILS classification and uh, basically it has uh, three more stages. One stage 0 with ocular hypertension stage uh, and then uh, stage 4 and stage 5 they have added. So you can go through